mother machine of torque. This is a bike that'll definitely rip your house off the foundation in pretty much every gear. This is one of the few 500s I've ever ridden you can actually start in fifth gear and it'll pull it. Third gear holies, no problem. Mountain of torque. This is the finest KX500 ever to roll off our benches here at Kaplan Cycles. If you follow the channel, you remember uh, back in March at Daytona Bike Week, I bought two 500s from the original owner, this, this 89 and a 91. We got this back. Uh, Wizard took a look at it. We all examined it. It had the pristine California frame rails. Actually, they're Florida frame rails. He's from Florida. But the original owner didn't ride it that much, so the original frame rails were mint. The original rims were in excellent condition. So it was a really good core bike for a full restoration. So that's what we did. We embarked on a six-month journey where we took this thing right down to the, every nut and bolt on it. Wizard's sitting in the background. He can pipe in if I, if I leave in and out here. Um, this silencer that on here, I'll start with that. This is a super rare, what what brand is it, Was We think it's a DMC. DMC. Dave Miller Concept. Si Dave Miller Concept silencer. It's, it's really long, and these 500s work really well with a long silencer. Long silencer. However, if you buy this bike and you want it to bark like the hounds of hell, we'll put a, a shorty on here for you. Wiz, can you hold this? I want to show them the bottom from this side here. Um, I want to show them the bottom of the uh, of the, the frame from that. Let's shut the fuel off so it doesn't it's gonna, hemorrhage. Well, it's going to pee out anyways. It's going to check, check, oh, check out the bottom of the bike. Look at the, look at the it's, gas is pissing out of it. But the, the engine cases, the frame rails are pristine. Brand new condition. There's not a ding in those. Those are the nicest frame rails I've ever seen on an 89, this side of 89. And yeah. why do I harp on that? Well, Wiz and I used to race these back in the 80s. We still race them today. Uh, but, you know, I, I ride a 97. I completely crushed my frame rails in in, in, a, in a in a season of NESC motocross racing. When I say crushed them, they're completely flattened, and uh, the bike was basically the frame was ruined. And that's what you got to start with. You got to start with a good, pristine, clean frame. Rip this right down to the frame. The frame was sandblasted, and then Ronnie laid down this green factory original paint job on it. It went back up to. The shop and Andrew and the wizard tag team this thing and they put all new bearings in it. New steering head bearings, new swing arm bearings, new shock linkage bearings, new shock bearings. They took the wheels completely apart, took the spokes out of it. The, the hubs and the rims went down to Carlos in the detail shop. He hand sanded and polished these original Kawasaki, original date coded 1991, or excuse me, 1989 rims. Polished them like chrome. Polish the swing arm like chrome. It took them 13 hours to do it. It's, 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 it's a lot of work. And they look like they're chromed. They're not. That's polished aluminum. Very easy to maintain. You just use Pro 40, put a little shine on it after every ride, take you 20 minutes, and they'll shine up like brand new. The hard work's been done. They're shined. The hard work is, is sanding down the original factory clear coat and polishing the rims till they shine like a diamond. So then the rims went back up to the Wizard. They're relaced with Buchanan spokes. Brand new uh, wheel bearings were installed. A brand new uh, wave rotor was installed. We vapor blasted in the in the vapor honing tank the the entire brake caliper system front and rear. The calipers were rebuilt. New brake pads. Uh, new front brake line was ordered uh, from Partzilla. Uh, new fork boots. The forks were rebuilt with new fork seals and fork lowers were polished. I almost forgot to mention that, but that's pretty obvious. Carlos polished those like chrome. The uh, front uh, fender is brand new. The front number plate is brand new. And zoom in on that number plate. This is a one-off Steiger Designs. Motul is the only oil we use in our two strokes, the only brake fluid we use in our two strokes, and VP is the only fuel that'll ever go in the tanks of our bikes. Um, we've had a lot of bad luck with wrong fuel, so we don't screw around. We put the best to everything in them. So it's got the VP fuel uh, in there, and moving up from there, you can see the triple clamps were polished and the, the, the uh, like chrome, and the steering head bearings have been replaced, and even the bar mounts were polished. Brand new set of Renthal bars, brand new Renthal crossbar pad, a brand new set of ProGrip 801s, new throttle assembly, new, uh, a complete new master cylinder and brake lever, complete new Pro Taper, um, quick adjust perch, new kill switch. Um, I ordered a lot of the parts for this thing and uh, the parts list is pages long. Um, it was done right. Brand new 1989 KX250. Reproduction tank. It's a little smaller than the 500. It looks tight as a tiger and it, it just flat out works. It lets you get up a little farther forward on the bike. This thing's an absolutely stunning piece. Back to the graphics. One off by Steiger Designs, my girlfriend Christy. 
This is not the only, it's the 82nd custom kit she's done with the carbon fiber background on aggressive graphics. Ben has the best equipment in the, in the Northeast. He printed these graphics. We got the Motul, the GPI racing, the FMF exhaust and the Kawasaki logo on there. The seat covers by Moto Seat, designed by Christy to match her kit. So when you stand back and look at the bike from back here, um, stand back about eight, 10 feet, you can see this green swoop that comes down the side, ties in nicely with this black right here, which comes through the graphics. It's all designed by Christy. Um, these number ones are removable. If you wanna take these off and put your number on there, um, go ahead. Uh, we just think it's the bike's number one to us, so it just we put those on there, it looks badass. All the plastics are brand new. Brand new fuel tank, brand new fuel cap, brand new uh, breather line, brand new radiator shrouds, brand new green radiator protectors. And take a look at those radiators, guys. Handmade aluminum radiators, brand new radiator cap, all new radiator hoses. Now, if the right side of the engine looks brand new, well, it is brand new. I bought this from Partzilla. It's a brand new Kawasaki OEM uh, right side of engine cover with the whole water pump housing, all new water pump pump components all new hardware on the engine and the brand new kawasaki kicker these are the original pegs they're mint more proof the bike's never been abused because uh, you know what a pro will do to a set of pegs in a frame in a season original brake lever mint condition brand new kicker um brand new water pump uh new gear lube of course the um cylinder was bored in house by the manic mechanic to a very tight tolerance with a brand new piston brand new rings uh, and if you look closely on the other side here, you'll see we did some key upgrades to this motorcycle. Look at this. Best carb in the business. This is what they put on the brand new $30,000 built500.com bikes. The same exact carburetor. It's none other than a Kian Airstriker, not a China clone. This one came for, directly from Sudco, the only the importer and, and the only one we trust. Of course, brand new fuel petcock. Of course, new fuel lines, new breather hoses. New, uh, all new hardware on the engine. You can see the new, new hardware on the engine. The cylinder's been bored uh, by the Manic Mechanic himself. Um, the cylinder head has been vapor blasted and cleaned. All new hardware, all new hoses. Guys, this is a brand new Kawasaki ignition cover. That's not a repaint, guys. It's brand new factory fresh. I don't know how long I'll be able to get these components for these classics, but they're still available. Uh, so we ordered a new ignition cover. Uh, new, brand new electric electronic ignition we installed into it. Um, Brand new clutch, all the components in the clutch are new. You can see the uh, uh, case protector is brand new. Zoom in on that, Ronnie, show them that. Brand new case protector, all new bolts, brand new counter shaft sprocket, um, new hardware for the, for the pegs. This is the original shifter. More proof this thing's got no time on it, guys. Look at that, the original shifter is in mint condition. Uh, of course, the new silent uh, exhaust system has all new mounting hardware and new pipe mounts, has new exhaust springs. Guys, no expense spared. If there was a nut and bolt on here that wasn't brand new, it would stick out like a sore thumb because, well, the whole motorcycle is like a complete, it, it is a completely remanufactured motorcycle. It is super tight. There's very little vibration for a 500. These are the correct color fork boots for this year. Um, the brake system's brand new. The uh, swing arm has been polished like chrome. It's, it's just, oh, of course, I just smudged, smudged it with my greasy paws. You got a ra clean rag on here, Ronnie? Uh, Carlos would be pissed if he saw Not me clean. do that. But uh, uh, the... Uh, this I gotta get some Pro 40. Wizard hands me a greasy rag to wipe off my greasy paw print. It's the only thing I got. <laughs> we'll have to get some some uh, glass cleaner. Check out check out the brand new um, brand new uh, um, chain guide uh, and chain slider with brand new uh, gold chain. Ch guys, when, when when Wizard ordered this green sprocket, he's like Ken. The Wizard's more of a KX guy than me. He used to race these back in the 80s. Him and Junior like the KXs. I'm a CR guy. I have fell in love with a couple KXs. The, the, the KPR KX500 was the nicest one ever to come out of here. Let's face it, that one was all titanium. It was like under the FIM limit for, for 500s. Yeah. And it had a 70-something horsepower race engine in it and a handmade aluminum tank. That bike was, <coughs> to duplicate that bike would cost you $40,000. It was obscene in every respect it, to duplicate this bike if you paid a shop to do what we did to this bike it would be you would you better have you better start with a five thousand dollar deposit and plan on a couple more five thousand dollar payments because we've got between the polishing and the painting and the graphics just to design this graphic kit took christy the better part of 12 hours to create the templates 
and to design the graphics into she she they don't have templates for these for most of these bikes especially with aftermarket plastic so she she takes and makes a template of this puts it on the wall takes a picture of it and ports it into her computer and creates her own template and then test fits it <coughs> it's a ridiculous amount of work and I'll come home from night at work and we'll go over the design, we'll mop, tweak it a little bit. Usually uh, I have very little input on the graphics, I just let her, she's an artist, I let her do what she does. Wizard says he's an artist too, right? Um, yeah. I'm an <laughs> Wizard's an artist too. So, so um, Wizard picked out this color combo. I was like, I don't know, man. Uh, I don't think it's going to work. And he put it on there. I saw it from across the room and I was like, love at first sight. So, something, I don't like the red anodized sprockets, but this green, with the, the way it works with the rest of the green and the gold chain, it's just freaking spectacular. The black hub sets it off. <coughs> you might be right. Yeah. Um. That was that was uh that was your that was that was Wizard's idea. The, the the black the green. Of course, all new hardware to mount the um the sprocket. All new uh, uh adjusting hardware. Brand new axle. Um. No expense spared build. It's got the new um spokes in the rear mounted to the original hub, which was sandblasted and. and repainted and new, brand new bearings in there of course a brand new rotor the rear caliper went through the vapor blaster that that's not painted guy guys look at that rear caliper that's raw raw uh metal it was vapor blasted um to give it that finish of course a new rim lock new tube new rim rim strip new shock protector look underneath the rear fender here every piece of hardware and every piece of plastic you see looks brand new because it either is brand new or restored to a high level like these, this original classic aluminum. That silencer is probably 18 inches long. Look at this thing. It's like a work of art. I, I'm sure Carlos has got a couple hours in, into the silencer. If you don't like this silencer, I'll swap it out for an FMF shorty uh, with, with no charge because I would love to keep it for the next project. I think it's freaking awesome. It makes it a little quieter, but it gives you, I don't know, it, it, it's, like, it's like weird. I, I can come up the driveway on this thing, literally 3,500 RPM and you're fucking flying. 3,500 to 5,500 RPM, this thing's putting down more torque than any new 450 today, and I can prove that on a dyno. Um, the, 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 torque, the torque curve on this thing is, is flat, and uh, <clears throat> it produces about 20 to 25% more torque than any of the new 450s. It might be a horsepower up or, or down, depending on the model, but it'll put down around 53 rear, rear wheel horse on a dyno. But the magic is in the torque at a low RPM where the 450 got to rev it to 10, 12,000 RPM. This thing peaks at about 7,000 RPM and drops off. So it's a, it's a torque motor. These things dominated desert racing and off-road racing with Destry Abbott and the rest of the Team Green squad. These absolutely owned the desert races. Come around the side, Ronnie. Sh show them the fit and finish uh, on the new electronic ignition components here, the way everything's mounted and wired. And um, like, I'm proud of what we did here. Um, it's an absolutely freaking gorgeous piece. It's, it's, a, it's a 1989. We usually do the, the, the later model upside down fork ones, um, but there's something about the 89 Cowie and the 89 Honda that uh, it's just a really cool era. And if you stand back and look, look at the, sh show them the profile from, from, from right here, this, this view from this side, Ronnie. <coughs> the, the way this whole thing comes together and it looks like the bike was dipped in chrome. The wheels, the exhaust, all the hardware, the carbon fiber um, graphics. It's, the bike's a effing 10. The bike is a, a, a 10. And I, I judge motorcycle shows, vintage motorcycle shows. Um, I own the motorcycle museum. I'm the king of ping. I've done more 500s than anybody in the United States of America. And if you've done more than me, comment. Co comment in there. Show me the videos. Show me the pictures because mine are all online. And I'm not bragging. I'm just saying we, we, we've done more 500s than anybody else. I've had as many as 55 500s in stock at a time that we're restoring. There's probably 25 in stock today that um, were either restored and on display in the museum. We've got, and we've got them all. We've got, we've got Suzuki 500s. We've got Honda, Kawasaki, Yamaha. Husqvarna, KTM, we've got them all. Um, this, listen, everybody's got their own opinion. They, like to say they're, every, they're like, well, I don't want to say it on camera, but they're like the other thing, everybody's got one of, but they're um, <clears throat> considered by many of the KX500 faithful uh, to be the best engine, 500 engine ever made. I personally like the simplicity of the Honda and the durability. Um, and the violent hit of a non-power valve 500. But if you're riding it on slippery terrain or desert racing, the Kips exhaust valve 
really uh, makes it a little more manageable. Even on tar coming up the driveway, you can just torque it right up and it'll give you uh, all that power down low because the exhaust ports are, are closed a little more and they open up when you get up in RPM. And then you have this violent hit up top, which is uh, uh, like no other. Uh, new chain sliders, new chain rollers, everything's new on it. You know, probably, uh, probably, probably what I should have done I started off the video and said what's not new on it and i don't know i don't know what's not new other than the frame is original and it's mint the forks are original and mint the triple clamps are original and mint the engine cases are original and mint the shifter that's probably would have been the easy thing to do everything else is brand new chris did i leave it and then out i mean i mean you you guys have been swing on cases frame no i mean i mean uh, the, the, it's all original, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, but but anything they this, that, left out, no, not did, really. Did I hit, did I touch on all the bases? Do you yeah, want to add yeah, anything? I mean, I mean, even the even the brake kit, the uh, brake kit calipers, like brand new pins. See the brand new pins for the calipers. Just ordering all the parts for this. If you can order all the parts to do this in less than eight hours, you're my effing hero, and I want to hire you. Okay. And new hoses too. Because it takes a long time that you gotta chase these parts down all over oh, the yeah. United States and yep. half the time they ship the wrong effing thing, yeah. which has happened. They ship the wrong master cylinder, they ship the wrong this and that, and mm -hmm. you gotta start over. Yeah. And that's why it didn't take us six months. It took us six months to do the project. We could if all the parts were here and well, we could outsource some of the stuff where we work we did, it could have got done a lot quicker, but I would venture to guess we've got in the area of 125 to 150 hours real shop labor, not to mention drooling on it for months uh, and how much time we spent just walking around it like monkeys around a flame, drooling on it when it's on the, on the lift as it came together. We've done, I don't know, 10 videos on this bike already. Uh, I'm obviously excited about it, but I don't know what else to say. I think it pretty much sums it all up. I remember for a second, I said, what do you guys want to add anything uh, special about this one? Ron Ronnie's like, bring a fat checkbook. And it reminded me what Carlos said. And that Carlos does all our policy. You know, Carlos, who's got a knack at customizing bikes, and he's been around since we got here 13 years ago. He lives right up the street, used to do videos for us, came to all events, been to the races with us. He, he nicknamed this bike, and I think it's going to stick. I'm going to put it in the, uh, in the eBay ad. He nicknamed it the High Roller. He goes, this bike's a High Roller because only a High Roller is going to have a bike this nice. Um... And what you do with it's up to you, man. I mean, it's ready to go to the line at Unadilla and pull a big fat third gear holy, uh, or it's ready to roll into the museum or hang it from the ceiling of your man room. It's, it's almost too nice to ride. Um, that's why I'm not pulling third gear holies on it over there. Cause when I do that on these bike, it creates, creates labor, a lot of labor for the guys to get it back to this Kodak moment that we have here. So, um, if you have any questions about it, give us a call. Um, it's a beautiful piece for sure things like like the the, the new uh, re rear brake line the new um um brake guides the all new the new hardware the new shock bumper to go with the new shock bearings and look at the look at the side of the shock right here if you see one that's been ridden the, it's all shiny up top and worn out from the boot rubbing on it not this one man it looks like it just came out of the box original factory cases are pristine original wheels are like they are dipped in chrome the swing arm there's no gouges in the swing arm that's why we went, that's why I picked this one. I don't pick a turd. I know why, you know, don't waste your time polishing a turd. If you're gonna do a 500 over, find a one owner original like this with a mint frame, mint engine cases, and do it right. It might take you a year, might cost you a stack of cash, but you'll have one of the finest 500s. And this is, Wiz, this is on the podium of KXs we've had roll out of our shop, isn't it? Sure, we got another one coming up too. Which one's that? Oh, the 2000? 99. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, not nearly this nice, but um, we had a 91 that just rolled out. The KPR, I would say I'd put the KPR bike. That was at another level. That was a titanium. Uh, Keith, what the Keith, bike? Was that it? No, that was a different one? Yeah, yeah. The, K, the KPR bike was a whole, that was, a, that was an absolutely ridiculous, yeah, all titanium, handmade aluminum tank. That was a factory race weapon. But this is, uh, the, as far as the fit and finish, this is, as good as the KPR bike, um, there's more polished parts on this and uh, all the components are new, so it's freaking badass. So good luck bidding on it. There's, this is, there's only one like this for sale in the world today. Uh, go online on eBay, you won't see nothing like this. Go on to bring a trailer, go, go on the KX forums. You're, you're not gonna find anything that a shop with our skill set